Hi, we're back. We said we would be and we are here. Uh, thank you for letting us have a week off. We hope you managed without us for a week, uh, but we are now back and raring to go for the next few weeks. We have reached one of my favourite books and stories in the Bible. But I'm going to tell you about that later. And I haven't forgotten that I finished on a bit of a cliffhanger last time and I need to pick that up. So we'll come back to that later. I was thinking uh, as I was getting ready to do this today that it's going to be a bit funny when we all see each other again because we haven't seen each other for so long. We'll all have changed a little bit. Um, I bet that a lot of you have grown since I last saw you, you've probably grown a little bit. Um, if you're like me, your hair will have got really long because we've not been able to get haircuts. Or maybe you've got some nice people in your house who are talented enough and can do it for you. Um, but we can all look forward to that. Hopefully one day soon we'll be able to see each other. And in the meantime, we're going uh, we to do Jam Club and we've got some more exciting things planned I can't tell you about those yet. You'll have to keep watching over the next few weeks and I'll be able to tell you about something exciting that's going to be coming up um, in the summer. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm not going to tell you yet. Uh, let's start with a song like we usually do. It's one we've been doing a couple of times on Jam Club Online. Uh, it's called I Will Not be afraid. Again, it's got great dance moves. Uh, so up you get, have a nice dance around and remember you don't need to be afraid because uh, God is always with you. Enjoy. It's a great song. I love that one. It's got a good beat to it. Uh, right. We uh, finished on a cliffhanger the last time uh, we met for Jam Club Online. Let me remind you what that cliffhanger 
was. We heard about that wonderful king, Josiah, who became king when he was only a child and he kept following God all the way through his life. And I read this bit from the Bible that said, while Josiah lived, the people obeyed the Lord, the God their ancestors obeyed. And I said something like, that sounds like maybe they didn't keep obeying God once Josiah had died, but maybe they did. And I left it on the cliffhanger. Would the Israelites who were meant to be the people of God, would they keep following God after Josiah had died? Or would they turn away from God? What did you think? Who thought they were gonna keep following? Who thought they wouldn't? Well, let me read to you what happened next. There were a few more kings after Josiah and the people did not follow God. But God loved them so much. He kept warning them. Listen to this. The Lord sent prophets, you know, his messengers again and again to warn his people. He did this because he had pity for them. Uh, he didn't want to punish them, uh, but he couldn't let them keep getting away with doing what they were doing. They did some really terrible things um, and he loved them so much. But the people made fun of God's prophets. They hated God's messages, so they refused to listen to the prophets. Finally, God became so angry with his people that it was time to act. And that's where we pick up today's story. Um, we're going to a book called Daniel. Uh, you may know some stories about Daniel. Let me show you on our timeline. So we've been up here and we did about uh, Elijah. Uh, we're now coming to, you see his name up here, Daniel. And this is where our story starts with some soldiers. And I'll tell you what happens there in a minute. Down here, you might see a story that you might know. We're going to come to that story in a few weeks time because that story happens quite near the end of Daniel's life. So we start up here. So we get that light out of the way with the soldiers. So let me put that down and we'll see what happens in today's story. Get yourself nice and comfy. As I say, this is one of my favourite books in the Bible. It's obviously not starting well with God being angry and punishing them, but stick with me and stick with this story because it turns out really well and it's very exciting. So are we comfy? Then let's find out what happens to Daniel and some of Daniel's friends. So God was angry, angry at his people who weren't behaving like his people. They even hated hearing from God. And after chance, after chance, after chance, God gave him so many chances, finally he acted. So King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and surrounded it with his army. They captured the city of Jerusalem. They entered the temple and stole some of the things that had been used to worship God and took them back to Babylon to put them in their own temple to worship their own gods. And then they took people. Some of the first people they took were young men from some important families, even from the royal household. Because they wanted these men to come and work for the king of Babylon. So they were taken away from their city. Probably very scared, not knowing what was going to happen to them, leaving the home that they had known and loved. And among these men were four friends, Daniel, 
Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And although a lot of the people in Jerusalem had turned away from God, these four friends hadn't. They still followed God. But it didn't stop them from being taken captive along with everybody else. When they got to Babylon, they found out that they were going to be part of a three year training program. They were going to have to learn the language of Babylon so that they could speak, read it and understand it. And the four friends said, yeah, they would do that. They were going to have to learn about the history and the culture and the religion of Babylon. And the four friends said, yeah, yeah they would do that. But then came something which I think you and I would have struggled with. They wanted to change their names. So Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah were all Jewish names and they all meant something to do with their God, the God they worshipped. But the Babylonians wanted to change their names to names that had something to do with Babylonian gods. I don't know about you, I love my name. My name's quite unusual and people have quite often got it wrong. And I get a little bit upset when people get my name wrong. Um, if they only get it wrong slightly, it doesn't bother me too much. But if they get it wrong a lot, it kind of bothers me because I like my name. And if somebody tried to call me something completely different to Angeline, I, I think I would say no. And particularly if I knew that my name had a very special meaning and had been chosen specially for me. But the four friends said yes. So Daniel had his name changed to Belteshazzar, Hananiah became Shadrach, Mishael became Meshach, and Azariah became Abednego. I know, they're quite funny names. They probably all sound a bit funny to us, but that's just because they're from a different country and people probably think our names are funny too. The four friends said yes. They said yes to learning the language. They said yes to learning about the history, the culture and religion. They said yes to having their names changed. But there came a point when they said no. And it's a bit of a strange one. You see, every day they were given food and wine that uh, was the same food and wine that the king ate. And the four friends decided that no, they weren't going to eat this. We don't really know why. It might have been because um, it didn't meet the Jewish laws of particular foods that they could and couldn't eat. It talks a lot in the beginning of the Bible. It's got things about the different rules of things they could eat. And it might have been that, that it broke those rules. It might have been that it had been offered to idols first because some people did that in their culture and religion. They offered their food to an idol before they ate it. And maybe the four friends thought that wasn't right because they didn't want to be mixed up in worshipping idols. But it doesn't say, so we don't know. And you know what? I don't think it really matters. What matters is that there came a point when the friends felt they had to make a stand to show that they were different, that they belonged to God. And it's also important that they didn't do it in an angry way and they didn't cause a fuss. Daniel just went to the person in charge and said, look, um, we'd like permission not to eat this. And the man in charge said, well, look, even if I wanted to do it, I couldn't because 
if the king sees that you're not looking as healthy and strong as everybody else, then it's my neck that's going to get it. So Daniel said, well, how about this? Why don't you, for 10 days, just give us vegetables and to eat and water to drink? And if at the end of the 10 days, uh, you can see whether we're looking healthier or not healthier and you can make your mind up then and do what you think is best. So, seemed a fair deal, okay, that's what they did. And after 10 days, they looked healthier and stronger and better than all the other young men who'd been eating the king's food. So from then on, no more of the king's special food for them, they just had vegetables and water. That wasn't the only way that God helped them. Throughout the three years of their training, God made them wise and he helped them to learn. They learned all sorts of things. And Daniel could even understand dreams and what they meant. And when the end of the three years came, Daniel and his friends were better than all the rest of the young men who'd been through the training. They were wiser and had more understanding. In fact, it wasn't just than the other students who'd been studying alongside them. The king discovered that they were 10 times better than all the people who currently worked for him. So they began to work for the king. They'd taken a stand for God. They dared to be different. And God had blessed them. And it had all worked out okay. Life for them in Babylon was only just starting and it's going to get a bit exciting, a bit nerve wracking at times. You'll see as we go through the stories over the next few weeks. But they made a stand for God, just in a very polite, calm way, just to show that they were different. And I think that sometimes God wants us to do that for him. It's very easy just to do what everyone else around us is doing. And sometimes we have to stop and think, is this what God would want me to do? And sometimes the answer will be yes, like it was for Daniel and his three friends. They said yes to lots of things, but there did come that time when they said no. And we have to be listening to God and asking God to help us make good and wise decisions so that we know when that time comes to say, no, I'm not going to do this because I love God and I think God wouldn't want me to do this. And like God was there for Daniel and his friends, God will be there for us too and he'll help us as we make those right decisions. We're going to sing about that now. We're going to sing our song Stand Together so that we're going to stand strong, standing up for God each day. Let's sing. Thanks for watching Life Tree. So now it's time uh, to go over to Nikki's house again um, and to see what she's got for us to make to remind us of the story or of some of the things we've learned from it today. So let's go see Nikki. Hi Jam Club, how are you all doing? Hope you've had a good week off uh, and enjoyed the sunshine. It's still really hot, isn't it? 
Um, so I'm back inside today, it's a bit too hot for me outside today. Um, and I'm going to show you um, our craft for this week and it's um, badges. We're making some badges, big badges, little badges, um, because um, in the story today, Angeline was telling us about Daniel and his friends and how they stood out and they made a stand to show that they were different, that they were following God. They dared to be different. They um, were brave and they didn't go along with the crowd. And sometimes we have to do that if we want to make the right choices in life. We don't have to miss out on everything. Um, but sometimes if something's not good for us or um, God doesn't want us to behave in that way, then we have to make a stand and say, no, we're not going to do it. So my badge, this great big one I've got on here, says dare to be different for God. And it's got Daniel chapter one on the bottom there and a big smiley face in the middle. Now, this one is a proper big rosette one, um, but we're going to make some smaller ones as well. I'll tell you what you need. You basically need to go in your recycling box. Um, I had a parcel delivered and get some card. It could be a cereal box or from a parcel or um, a cake box or anything where you've got some stiff card. OK, and you also need um, some pens or some paints or crayons um, and some scissors. And you'll need some glue and you'll need some sellotape and you'll need some of these some safety pins and you might want some um, stickers or um, nice coloured paper some wrapping paper or anything that you've got really to decorate it so this one this great big rosette one um, I thought that was quite daring if I wore that out in the shops people would notice wouldn't they um, but I got some football wrapping paper and I made it into like a rosette style. So I'll show you how to make one of those first of all. So you need um, two circles from your card. Can you see I've just drawn round. I've got a cup and I drew round it, but anything, depending on what size you want it to be, it could be round a sellotape roll or a cup or as big as a plate. It's up to you how big you want to make your badge. So you need two of those circles and then you need some um, strips of coloured paper so this one was wrapping paper and I this one I'm going to show you now was all different coloured paper that I had and you see they're about the same size okay they're the same width and the same length okay and then what I did was I got my glue and I stuck them all around the edge can you see that's the that's the back this is going to be the front of the badge and what you do is you, I'm just going to put the last one on here and I'm going to and then you stick it so that the bottom half so that the the pattern is facing the back now can you see but then you're going to put another blob of glue on there and we're going to fold it over and make a loop and press it down okay so now the ribbons are going all the way around the badge okay now then you make the front piece now it's up to you what you want to put on the on the front of there i'll show you some others that i've done in a minute but i did this one earlier just to save a bit of time because i was doing um mine with paint um and i used a pen and i used some stickers now words will be back to front but i also put on this one dare to be different for God and I thought I found these butterfly stickers and I thought well, they're really really striking bright colours and they're stand out and they're different so they'll really go well with the badge that I'm making so I painted that stuck some stickers on and I wrote my message on the front and that's just another card sticker so I'm going to put glue on the back there to make it stick okay Plenty of glue because stiff card does have a tendency to curl up when you're trying to um, when you're trying to glue it down, or if you've put paint on it, it can get very very curly. So I'm just going to press that down there. Can you see how I've stuck that on the front there? Now, if you want to add these tassels, like these ribbons at the bottom, you could use ribbon as well if you've got ribbon. I didn't have any ribbon, so that's why I've used paper. So I've got two more strips of the um, coloured paper 
And what I'm going to do is use my scissors and I'm going to cut a little V-shape in the bottom to make it look like um, the ribbons you get on rosettes. Just snip a little V-shape. I'll show you that in the camera. Can you see? Cut a little V's in the bottom. And then what you do is you turn your badge over so they've got the back of it. And using your glue again, you stick down your ribbons, if you like, on the bottom. Just like that, at a bit of an angle. And then they stick out at the bottom, like that. And then all you need to do... Well, that's a good thing to remind you. Make sure it lines up so your badge is straight. Otherwise, you'll have your ribbons sticking out of the side, especially if you've got a writing on it. OK, there we go. So then you leave that to dry. And if it's a bit curly, you might want to put a big book on top of it. And then you get, I'll show you on this one, actually, a safety pin. Oops. There we go. Can you see there? And you just put some sellotape across that part of the safety pin, okay, making sure it's level, all right. And then you can pin it onto your clothes. So that is how you make the big rosette badge. I'm just trying to get my badge closed. So I'm just going to put that under a big book and make it flat before I stick my pin on it. I'll put some uh, pictures of those in the pack for you so you can see what they look like as a reminder. But then I thought you could make some smaller ones as well. So these are a couple that I did earlier. Um, this one is just, again, it's just, just some uh, circle of card and I covered it with some yellow paper and I found this lovely colourful um, cross, if you can see that very clearly. Um, all different colours and I just stuck that onto the front and I thought that looked really really pretty um, and quite bold actually with the yellow you can wear that and then there was another one that I made that I um, I coloured this one in in felt tip okay um, and I found this picture online and I cut that out but you could draw that you could stick things on you could draw whatever you want and I drew the little cross in the red middle and I wrote the word Jesus on it so that's another badge there and then this one I haven't quite finished yet but inspired by the colours in this cross I drew a heart on the front now again sorry the words are back to front but it says Jesus loves you um, because he does uh, and I just drew a heart with some swirly patterns inside with my black pen and then I just got my felt tips out and I just coloured in the spaces a bit of pink there and a bit more blue over here okay and I shall just carry on filling in those colours and make it it looks a little bit like a stained glass window but yeah, so make that. And then what I will do is stick my pin on the back so that I can wear my badge. Okie dokie. So those are the badges that you could try and make this week. You could make them, don't have to be round. I just happened to make them round because I had some round things to draw round. But if you want to cut out some um, uh, squares, stars rectangles or love hearts whatever whatever um, shape you want then you could make um, a badge and put something on it that um, points people to God that um, shows you're a bit different um, and you know it's a bit of a talking point isn't it if somebody says oh why are you wearing that badge you can say well because I love God and I want to live his way so that's the craft for this week. You can make great big rosettes like that, okay? Or you can make smaller badges with different symbols, pictures and messages on. And all you need is cardboard, glue, scissors, pens, paint, crayons, um, some sellotape and some safety pins. 
hope you have fun with that do let us know um, if you make one send us a picture it'd be lovely to see take care everybody see you next time thank you very much nikki um, those badges look great so i hope you have a go at making those and don't forget you can send in photographs of things you've made or just of what you're up to and we might include them in future jam club videos you get to star in an online video so we look forward to hearing from you and seeing the stuff that you've been up to um we're coming to the end of this week's club again uh, we're going to do a new song uh, but it's a song that's going to help us remember a verse in the bible i was thinking about today's story and how daniel and hananiah and mishael and azariah must have been quite scared when they were taken away from their home and wondering what was going on and yet they still kept trusting god and they made that stand uh, for him and god helped them um, and they've ended up now in a place where they've got quite powerful positions where they're able to talk to the king and the king is asking them for advice so it'll be interesting to see did god want them there for a reason is something going to happen that means it's good that they were in that job and i think if they'd said no to everything and if they'd caused a fuss and something terrible might have happened to them they wouldn't then be in the place that they're now in where they've got the king asking them for advice so we'll have to see what happens next in the story but the verse it made me think of in the bible was this it's in a book called jeremiah he was a man he was a prophet uh, who gave god's messages and this was one of god's messages um and he actually wrote it to the people who'd been taken away to Babylon, taken away from Jerusalem to Babylon and are probably really scared and wondering what was going to happen. And God said this, I've got good plans for you. I don't plan to hurt you. I plan to give you hope and a good future. Remember, these are people who turned away from God, a lot of them, not Daniel and his friends, but a lot of them had turned away from God. But he's still reaching out to me, still wants them uh, to love him and to say uh, sorry to him and to come back to him. And then he can uh, show them a better way to live. Uh, and he says this, he goes on and says, you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. And I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to bring you back from where you are. But it's that first bit. I've got good plans for you. Not plans to hurt you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And that's what this next song is about. That even when things seem like they're going wrong and we don't know what's happening, we can trust that God's got it under control. And he's got good plans for you plans to give you a hope and a good future. Even if we can't see what they are now, we can keep trusting and he'll guide us and help us to make good decisions so that uh, eventually we'll see where God has been leading us and what those plans are. So I hope you enjoy this song. You're watching Life Tree Kids.
that's it for another week. Um, we hope you have a really good week. Uh, we know some more of you might be back in school maybe next week. Um, we'll just have to wait and see how things are. Uh, but whether you're at home or at school, uh, remember we're thinking of you, we're praying for you. And we hope that you uh, stay safe, keep trusting God, and we'll see you again next Thursday. So take care and see you soon. Bye.